So we've got the morning session to do some sitting and walking and sitting together. At this point, quite often the body starts to get a bit tired, the mind starts to get a bit tired. You start thinking about other things you could be doing. <laughs> So it really takes some patience and to come on a meditation retreat is to step outside of your comfort zone and be assured that if we made the retreat absolutely perfectly comfortable then your meditation would be terrible. You want to find that balance between being comfortable and having nice surroundings, being willing to step outside of the comfort zone. The trick to the sixth sense method of meditation is to notice process. And so the Buddha was often asked, is there a self or is there no self? How did the universe begin? How did the universe not begin? Or what happens when you die? All these kinds of questions. And his answer was usually the same, as you're asking the wrong question. What we should be asking is, how does this process work? So he said, the process works like this. You see something with the eye. You hear something with the ear. You taste something with the taste. But whichever sense is strongest at that particular moment, that particular sense will attract your consciousness. So even though you can taste taste in your mouth right now, your consciousness is going either to your hearing or your visual sight. Even though you can feel feelings in your big toe right now, you're not conscious of those feelings, right? You are conscious of the either seeing or hearing right now. When something attracts your attention, you put your attention onto it. With your attention follows your consciousness. So your consciousness arises with that object and ceases with that object. So consciousness may not be the right word in English. We should be using the word cognizing. So you are cognizing or you are attending to a particular sense. So you are attending to this thought of somebody that stole your money 25 years ago, that mm -hmm. thought has arisen and now you're attending to it. That's where your consciousness is. And your consciousness, when you stop attending to that thought or sight or sound, be it in the past, the present or the future, then your consciousness with that thing ceases. So we understand consciousness as we are given the term and translation. Not in the usual English sense of consciousness, but in the sense of cognizing something. When you are cognizing something, you're holding it in the attention. You can then get this feeling of contacting. You're now being touched by that object and it will either please you or displease you or be neutral. Uh, because of this uh, contacting then, this sense of being in contact with the object, you get craving. You want to get rid of it, you want to get more of it, you want to engage with it, you want to understand it, you want to destroy it. These are all the different kinds of craving. So this is the process that happens. And also watching the ending of this process that when you stop paying attention to a particular thing, 
the consciousness with that thing ceases. And when the consciousness of it ceases, the feeling of being in contact with that thing ceases. So you may be remembering how the palms beat you at cricket. <laughs> Did that ever happen? It happened, it happened <laughs> once, right? <laughs> And when you think about that, it's suffering, right? You, you feel like that event is contacting you, it's in touch with you. It's touching you, and because it's touching you, you get this feeling of liking or disliking the feeling. And because of the liking or disliking, you get craving. You want it to be like that, or you don't want it to be like that. But ten seconds ago, before I mentioned the English beating you at cricket, you didn't care. Because it wasn't contacting you. You didn't have that feeling of contact with that particular thing. So note that when you're not contacting something, it doesn't cause liking or disliking. It doesn't cause craving. So we want to pay attention to this process. And the Buddha said, you can see the arising of the entire world in this process. You can also see the cessation of the entire world in this process. He said, if you've seen the arising of the world, you cannot argue that the world is not real or does not exist. And if you've seen the cessation of the world, you cannot argue that the world does exist, that the world is real. So these were some of the arguments in India at the time and in the present day. Is the world illusion? Is it Maya? Is the world illusion? And some people say, no, the world isn't illusion, it's delusion. Well, according to Buddhism, the world arises and ceases with your attention. So he said, these questions of the beginning of the universe, do I exist after I die? Or don't I? Is there rebirth? Is there a self? So all of these are the wrong question. What you want to understand is this process. So, as we do the meditation, you're sitting and you're watching the breath, then something pops into your mind, it attracts your attention and you start thinking about it. Usually you won't even know that you've now moved from the breath and started thinking about something. But after five minutes or ten minutes, sometimes a couple of days, suddenly you realize <laughs> that my attention has wandered away. I thought I was watching the breath, but actually I was thinking about cricket. Then you stop, make a note of where your mind has wandered to. You might note thinking, thinking or hearing, hearing, seeing, seeing. And don't get confused, seeing something in the past, well, is that thinking or is that seeing? I mean, don't get confused, it's just supposed to make things simpler. So either way you note it as thinking or as seeing, it's okay, but you stop, you're knowing what's really happening. And when you label where your conscious attention has moved to and you've labelled it, you've already taken a step back from the attachment. Then you can bring your attention back to the meditation object. If you need to investigate something, investigating in terms of Dharma is not thinking about something but feeling it. So. Sometimes you might need to stop and look at something, or remember something, or feel something. But when you do so, you'll realize it's not going to stay in your attention for more than a minute. Nothing stays in your attention for more than a minute. Some people think they're going crazy when they meditate. Because they feel like they can do things for hours, but when they stop and look, nothing, you can't do anything for more than a minute. Then bring your attention back when you're ready. Okay, so we're going to sit 
and walk quietly. 